Hello here and welcome again to another edition of the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washett. One of my favorite weekends of the year, guys, Memorial Day weekend. Wow. You do get fired. I, I like because it is like you're home. You got Big Ten baseball on. Hopefully Nebraska's playing. Fire up the Traeger, maybe make some. Keep I, selling it. I need more. You go buy. You Keep go buy selling. college football preseason magazines at Barnes okay. and Nobles. He's, he's big on magazine season. Yeah, that is a big moment. Um, more. What What's on the grill? Sure. Yeah, what are you cooking? Probably ribs. Oh right. yeah, you are. Well, you the, are I, I live with. I, I live in a house with three other women. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard to get everybody on board with ribs. Two of them, are your daughters. Two of my daughter, and like right. they, they, they. Yeah, what is this weird to clarify. meat? <laughs> so, Sean, that's a pretty good sales job. Yeah. You can do some relaxing too, right? Yeah, just be in the backyard. School gets out this week, so you don't have to have more of the rigorous drop-off pickups. Some adult soda pops. Rob, yeah. you have flip-flop flip-flops on right now. Yes. Okay. Are, you do the flip-flop thing? No. You don't. I don't expose my feet. <laughs> I do because I just don't care. Well, you got you're still young enough. And you're rocking Lincoln High today, by the way. Let's hey, go. Sean, I'm thinking about going to get some flip-flops, which I never wear. <laughs> Get some. Just go to <laughs> right. where, where do you go? <laughs> I don't know wherever you want. Abby, Abby, you don't have to go on. anywhere. You could order them. I'm not ordering flip flops. I can go buy them. Oh my God. Wait, well, let's get back on track. <laughs> all right, all right, let's get back on track here. Um, opening headlines Memorial Day weekend. Thanks again for joining us. Hope everyone's got great plans. They're at a lake listening to us somewhere fun. Uh, but let's start with this. Um, a lot going on with Kevin Warren, the Big Ten, yeah. the media rights. And a new piece of it all kind of got unveiled here as we got ready to tape the show. Um, NBC, you know, with, with the night games and, and and playing this, it's a big part of the contract. NBC is going to have an exclusive night window. But the issue is there are three weeks essentially in November that have been taboo for night games in Big Ten history. They've allowed night games to be played on the opening weekend in November. But then the next three have not been allowed. Kevin Warren greenlit the deal with NBC allowing games to be played on those weekends without really running it up the flagpole. And right. And here's the issue. I think a lot of teams would be cool playing at NBC on night in the big 10, but the biggest ones, Michigan, Ohio state and Penn state are not right. So, I mean, we have to really explain this carefully because it's sort of complex. Like if you told Tom Allen, Hey, we'll play in November at night in Indiana, they'd say, hell yeah. All right. The bottom line, Sean, is the NBC primetime deal with the Big Ten is not finished. And it's three months away. We're three months away from kickoff, right? Right. About three months away from kickoff. I mean, that's what we have to. I mean, this is all very. Pete Thamel came with a very enlightening ESPN article. And that's the, the biggest takeaway. There's a lot of takeaways. But the biggest takeaway is the deal with NBC and the Big Ten is not finished. We thought it was. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about a $7 billion media rights deal here. And now we're also talking about $5 million per school suddenly being in flux. $5 million per and, school. And, well, and the, the money, the $40 million for that conference championship game. They found What the schools found out is they are going to have to pay back nearly $40 million to Fox because Warren, the former commissioner delivered NBC the Big Ten title game in 2026 without full authority. This is that is an incredible sentence. He sold a piece of land he didn't own. <laughs> Essentially, that's fireable. That? Now, and you, he, you can say what you want in a in a polite way. Kevin Warren was fired. I, he was not he, going to be shocking. given. He was not going to be given a new contract to be the Big Ten commissioner. Dennis Dodd oh, reported Dennis that Dodd. in Jan January, and that just kind of fell under the covers. Mm -hmm. But it did. You go it back did. to that report when when he went to the Bears. Dodd reported on CBS on Twitter that Dennis Dodd was not going to be giving a was did not have a new contract in front of him to return as the Big Ten commissioner. Period. When when it was first reported that he was that that Kevin Warren was going to be the CEO and T president of the Bears, that's what he was leaving to do. I was immediately like, okay, something's not right here. He served three years, which is an incredibly low number for a commissioner. I mean, let's let's just go through a few. Roger Goodell, NFL commissioner since 2006, okay? Jim Delaney was the Big Ten commissioner for 12 years. Greg Sankey 
has been the SEC commissioner since 2015. Not that long, but not that long in commissioner world. Well, and the pay is more. Right, right. So I, right away, I was one, like when Warren moved on, I'm like, wait a second. Commissioners don't move on after three years. So now we're kind of finding out that things weren't right behind the scenes. There was a lot, a real lack of transparency in a lot of this between the Big Ten front office, ADs, and, and ADs and coaches. They were caught off guard. Well, by we some saw of this, this during stuff. COVID. We did. Yeah. We did. And he was it Bill Moose that said we everybody did. was kept in their own separate silos? Silos. And they, they purposely would not let the coaches, the ADs, and the presidents ever be together. Right. Right. We heard a lot of that. Now, at the time, you just don't know what to think exactly. But now you have this more this more evidence that there was a lack of communication from the top of the chain to to the coaches, to the ADs. You're seeing it. Thamel's report. That was that was my second biggest takeaway is, man, there, the, the communication was lacking. There just wasn't enough communication here. These ADs were caught off guard by the NBC. The ADs at these schools were like, wait a second, we're playing at night. Uh, th that's part of this all the deal. way to Black Friday. Yeah, all, and, and throughout November. Yeah, we're and so that leads me to this first piece. Yes. So Penn State and Michigan State have now agreed to play Black Friday. It was set to be Michigan State's Senior Day game in East Lansing. The game is going to be moved to Ford Field in Detroit, which is about ninety minutes away from East Lansing. So it'll be indoors at night. So it's going to be a great stage for the conference. For yeah, what do you think about programs. that, Rob? <laughs> Yeah, pretty cool. yeah. I mean, it's cool and like on the surface, but if you're Michigan State, you're not only giving up a home game, you're giving up your final home game of the year, your senior day home game, which means November 4th, when Nebraska goes up to East Lansing, that will be their final home game and essentially okay. their senior day on oh. November 4th, because then they follow that with two straight road games and then a neutral site game, quote unquote, in Ford Field. So mm. I don't mm. know. I mean, can you imagine Nebraska even like, thinking about doing something like that like this just shows you just oh, what, what a weird so scramble this is probably to, not to appease right? the networks that's right. all this is is trying to make it's scramble it's a scramble to try to recoup as much money as they possibly can from right. from the screw up from kevin warren 100 it's a scramble and penn state the my read is they're like yeah we'll do it but it's got to be indoors in detroit like james franklin's like we're not going to take our team in case it's like a blizzard <laughs> in east lansing right and cost ourselves maybe a chance to win the Big Ten East division because of weather conditions. I don't know, but what, like that—that's where you get the the purest pissed off right now because sure. the NFL teams, Patrick Mahomes would have to figure it out. Right. That's the, the like I don't know what the weather patterns in East Lansing are that time of year. My guess is it's not pretty all the time. It's not that bad here though, right? I mean, our recent Novembers haven't been awful. Yeah, it's hit and miss. It's like one out of five is bad. I'd say. Yeah. Usually it's wind, just cold and wind, like the the seasonal weather, like the winter snow and stuff. Like that hasn't been an issue for no, a long time. Yeah, it's yeah. it's funny though. Like they act like it's this huge concession and sacrifice to play on Black Friday. It's like we've done it here forever, like forty years. Or well, whatever. Rob makes a good point. I mean, Michigan State's given up its last home game. I mean, that's that's a lot to ask. Yeah, it, it is now for the consumer. Great, right? I mean, I think it's great. If you're the watching ratings, on TV, it's yeah. great. The yeah. ratings are going to be massive for that game. <laughs> yeah, massive. It's a Which, big game. Again, this is a TV so, decision. There's right. no benefit for either side if no. with, with any other part of this, Not outside right. of benefiting the TV network. Let's look at Nebraska's or schedule now. You, you look at the rest of November. So the first weekend, they'll get a night game on NBC. But there's two more weekends that have to be figured out. I think, and I was talking to Andy Candy, our good friend at Channel 7. Okay. Um, and we both agree that that November 18th Nebraska Wisconsin game in Camp Randall that just screams NBC primetime game. Okay. Especially if the Ohio States and the Michigans are going to be reluctant to want to play the night windows. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. And so I think when we go to Madison, you better you better pack up heavy. Don't don't pull a Dan Hop in 20 <laughs> 2014 He'll never 2013 and and bring a windbreaker for your main jacket to, to madison oh no, you're right I mean, and, and we've seen some wet 
<laughs> Sorry, we've Dan, seen, we love you. <laughs> we've seen some weather in Wisconsin, too. I mean, yeah. when, when Gordon ran for 700 yards against Nebraska, it was not a pleasant day, right? Right? <laughs> he run for 800. Was yeah, I think I get like that eight, wrong. Um, so the challenge, though, is this November 11th, the November 18th weekends, they've got to figure out some quality opponents to put in there for NBC. Okay. And, and get that all hammered out. That's fascinating. And that Nebraska Wisconsin game just screams okay. NBC. That makes sense, Sean. All right. And we don't know kickoff times yet. We're still okay. waiting. A lot of projections that Colorado Nebraska is going to be big noon kickoff on Fox, which would be 10 a.m., which I know everyone at, at this room is excited about. I know maybe you aren't excited listening to us to have to get up early and watch Nebraska. 11 a.m. here. At 11 a.m. here, 10 a.m. Boulder. Um, I mean, so that that we don't know that yet, but that's kind of the projections out there. We know Minnesota is going to be a night game to open the year. We know Illinois is going to be a night game. It's a Friday night game. But other than that, everything kind of still remains up in the air with the schedule. Uh, the Huskers did add a player this week, guys. Tyler, yes, they did. Tyler Knack, um, transfer four for four, offensive lineman, 6'6", six, six, goes 320 is what he told us. Oh, I know he's listed about 305-ish. Um, but Tyler Knack comes in as a four for four transfer from Utah. Four for four at a position where they have 14 scholarship Nebraska has 14 scholarship offensive linemen, which is not it's not a what real it rules it needs 16. Yeah, not a real low number. You're down one or two. That helps. Um, I don't know if this is an immediate contributor, but they, they are a little thin at tackle. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at what they have, they have basically three guys that are proven ready to go tackle and then nobody else not really no i mean i you know who we're talking about is bryce benhart turner corcoran and, and teddy prohaska now nora dean Nuili can play tackle in a pinch i think ben scott could play tackle if he played it he played at arizona state that's not what you want um i don't think jacob hood the transfer from george is ready i don't know that for sure but he didn't a, seem like it didn't seem like it didn't it. get talked about a lot so Knack definitely fills a need. Um, now, the one thing that gets your attention, he only had one other power five off Kentucky. out of the portal. Now, he had plenty coming out of high, high school. And the one thing you look at there, he's from nearby Salt Lake. Utah thoroughly vetted him. I mean, he's a, he's a, it wasn't like he came from New York. He got there, and they said, oh, that's not what we thought. They knew what they were getting. Now, I don't know why he's leaving, but I don't I, – my guess is it's – not a something that well, they didn't know about. And here's the thing with the portal. I think there's two kinds of portal shoppers. There's the immediate need. Here we go. The immediate need guy that yes. needs something like for the next night. Right. Right. And right. then there's like, hey, I'm going to buy this and like save it and yeah. build it up. And which one do you think this and, is? And Matt Rule is on that track right now. Like he's not looking for quick fix portal guys. Like he's not trying to solve the world's problems in one portal class he's he's like this is basically a mulligan for the lo the lost recruiting class that happened in 2022 for nebraska on the offensive line when scott frost was renegotiating his contract firing assistant coaches and they were on a mad scramble to essentially save their jobs yeah, and that's right they didn't take any high school players except justin evan jenkins who is the smallest offensive lineman on the roster I'm not saying he's a bad player but they had no tackle bodies they took Kevin Williams out of the portal, Hunter Anthony out of the portal. Both guys are already gone. So they needed to kind of mulligan that 2022 recruiting class on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. And depth is invaluable at this point, especially on that offensive line that we've seen. So, I mean, he doesn't have like that veteran experience that maybe you would like, but, you know, he's still a guy that can, can be a factor. I mean, the, with the Absolutely. way that he was recruited out of high school, there's something to work with there. Now it's a matter of just developing it and making it more uh, substantial. Most Our, coaches will tell you one other thing, Sean. Most coaches will tell you that big bodies are critical. I mean, there's just, just not that many. You never six, have too many of them. Yeah, there's not that many six six three hundred and twenty pound guys that are capable of playing just around. And he's – I'm not saying – he's more than that, but, you know, that's a big part of this. All right, when we come back, uh, there's going to be a leadership structure change with – how things are managed in terms of President Ted Carter, the Chancellor, Trev Alberts. We'll talk about that next. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show. And we're back here on the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sippel, Robin Washett, as we take you through this Memorial Day weekend. Um, some changes possibly going on at Nebraska with how 
the leadership structure is, particularly with athletics. And if you're not familiar, and we've learned a lot about what this is over the last couple of years because of COVID and some of the things that have happened, there is a COP, the Chancellor or the Council of Chancellors and Presidents. Every Big Ten school has one representative on there. For Nebraska, that representative had been Harvey Perlman and Ronnie Green over the years. Um, I think there's now a proposal being put out there by a couple of the Board of Regents, Tim Clare and some others, uh, Rob, Rob Schaefer, Schaefer, two regents that we both know, and um, they want to have President Ted Carter represent Nebraska on the COP, which in turn would maybe have the regents be more involved in some of these things instead of having some of the scenarios that we've dealt with over the years where, let's go back to 2019, Sipple, where out of nowhere, Bill Moose and Ronnie Green just extended Scott Frost from a seven-year contract to a nine-year contract mm -hmm. um, right before a game that they were like two touchdown underdogs in against Wisconsin. Um, you know, things like that. I, I, I just think a little bit more oversight over some of these big athletic decisions that have been made that, let's face it, have gone wrong at times over the years for Nebraska. Well, no, it's, it's a little more than a little more oversight. It's oversight. I mean, this is what the proposal is, is making Carter responsible for – for providing policy direction and oversight to Husker Athletics. I mean, it's as as Tim Clare told media, he would be in charge. I mean, he'd be in charge of that element, which I'm sure is fine with Trev. He would now, if you're Trev Alberts, so people wonder, well, how does this affect the AD? It's pretty simple, really. He will report to Ted Carter instead of reporting to the chancellor. There's an incoming chancellor from southern Mississippi, Rodney Barnett. This is not Bennett. Bennett. Thank you, Rob. Thanks for cleaning up the old man. <laughs> Rodney I'll, Bennett. I'll Rodney that. Bennett comes in from Southern Miss. And imagine coming in from Southern Miss and dealing with all of the issues in front of the athletic director at a Big Ten school right now. NIL. Um, help me, Sean. NIL. Um, I mean, he's he they're gonna expansion. Open, they're gonna open the 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 training facilities. facilities they're gonna they're gonna restructure memorial stadium um all of the things that are yeah i mean the the, the tv deal that's that we're talking about all these things he's got enough to worry about with academics that the chancellor does right correct mm -hmm. and to say oh budget yeah. academics research all that I mean, that we never talk about because it's not our purview like, but it is the, the athletics is the most important thing of the whole system period I don't care what you say. It's the most iconic brand in the state. And not the, just sports. I the mean. most important person in the leadership structure should be the one probably overseeing it. Right. So, and, so yes, this makes sense. And, and I think it makes sense, too, because of who we're talking about, Ted Carter. Like, he's not some lawyer that, you know. Our former professor. Drives by the stadium on game days and wants to see. The, like, he's at games. He wears jerseys to games. Like, he played sports. Runs marathons. Now, Ronnie Green. I'll say Ronnie Green and his wife. They were huge supporters, and, and they were they were really good in that role. Like they were, that. but I'm saying that, that to give a guy Ted Carter this responsibility, it makes sense because of of what he's about and what he understands. He hired. He helped hire Trev Alberts. He helped hire uh, Matt Rule. And so, I mean, like he's already 100%. been hands on on some of the most significant decisions this athletic department has already made. And so, who better to continue to guide this thing? down the right path and what is going to be some of the most like influential times in Nebraska sports history yeah. with the evolution of college sports and the conference of the big 10. Right. And he will enthusiastically take this position when it's voted. It matters to him. Yeah. When it's voted, well, in, which is, I think I I'm seeing this as a rubber stamp. This is going to happen. Yeah. I think it's inevitable. Yeah. And, and don't you think maybe through the interviewing process of the new chancellor, the regents even said, you know, Rodney um, is going to be a, a really good, chancellor but maybe he's not a fit and maybe he doesn't want to do all this yeah. i mean it really hasn't gone well know. it really hasn't gone well for the last few couple of cha uh, chancellors in nebraska that have tried to stick their nose in the locker room <laughs> who are we talking about harvey perlman <laughs> well i mean just think about harvey perlman harvey perlman hope nebraska lost is what, that's but that's my analysis of it i mean i, I don't well i mean it's a co pretty common pretty common opinion he mm. wasn't i don't I mean, I, I don't think he was big on sports. He had a football, football coach winning nine or ten games a year that didn't fit the profile he wanted, and so he didn't want the guy to win. 
Like, I mean, well, he was that, but and I he think just, it was a he broader... just took the winning for granted in right. some respects. Right. I think it was broader than that. I mean, I think the football thing overtaking the academia was an issue in his mind. I, I mean, come on. I, I'm just repeating what a lot of people have said many times. But think about what a good football program does for your universe. Look what it's done to Alabama and Clemson's enrollments. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's if if you don't believe Sean, there's there's story upon story about what how it's impacted Alabama's student body and its research numbers and its and its its uh, enrollment through the roof. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it has a huge impact on that. I mean, I had friends in college that came here from out of state. I had a friend from Houston, and he came here because he wanted to go watch good football games. He, I mean, <laughs> well, he, he liked the football. I mean, and- yeah, some of that. Yeah, it's the front porch. Is that well, that's what we always say, right? It's cliche, but. The football program, the the athletic departments, the front porch to your university. Now, people, now again, not everybody likes that. We like it. We're in that arena, but Sean, not everybody likes that, and I don't think Harvey liked that necessarily. But you what know? do you remember more about your college experience, like the the Notre Dame Nebraska two thousand one game, or the Oklahoma two thousand one game, or your Econ two ten class? I remember what I remember most is I, I made so many trips to drop an ad. I I I, I mastered it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I that's what i remember most and i got through i i just remember i mean it was figuring out i went to all the road games in college and did so, you like, i didn't know to, that going to class you did yeah from 2000 I, 99 i only went to one road game but in 2001 two and three i went to all the so like figuring out how to go to class and then get to the road games i mean it was a blast interesting show anyway yeah, that's pretty significant news um, that Ted Carter will be eventually here responsible for providing policy direction and oversight to the athletic department. And it makes a lot of sense. Uh, when we come back, Trev Alberts held his final uh, radio show for the season. He'll, he'll be back on later in late August, but covered a lot of ground. We want to hit on that and what he had to say next. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show. And we're back here on the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sippel, Robert Washington. And we're bringing in Abby Barmore to the discussion. We always get, I mean, guys, the most popular comment we get every week on our YouTube is more Abby Barmore, please. Yep. So we've listened to the comments. Give the people what they want. <laughs> and want, we want to bring Abby in on this discussion on volleyball because Trev Alberts on his weekly or monthly radio show uh, confirmed that um, he's very confident that they'll be able to have seating. Uh, he said, was it 91,000, Abby? Yeah, 91,000. And then the world record is 91,553 for uh, a soccer match in, in Barcelona. The U.S. record is 90,185. So I think the U.S. record, they're going at it. But do you think they can figure out a way to get to 91,554? I mean, they're trying really hard. <laughs> Um, I was a little impressed that they were adding more standing room, I guess, is where they're going to find that space um, and maybe clear out some of the (coughs) construction areas and find people to get in there. But they're going full send on it, and I think that they'll get pretty close. I mean, a lot of people didn't think they would sell out so quickly, but they made it to 82,000, and that didn't include the students on the field and at the box level. Mm. And the concert, that's coming out soon, right? Ooh. Yeah, they they hope to announce it soon. Yeah, and one thing Trev did say too, and he's like, he prepared people for this. Like, there's going to be a lot of people that aren't used to going to Memorial Stadium, going to this event. Um, that be patient because it's it's going to be a lot of logistics of getting this many people in the stadium. Because a football game, yeah, they say eighty six or eighty eight thousand, but it's really not that many people. I mean, there's some no shows and empty seats and people that know how to get in and out of the stadium. This could be a lot of groups of people that maybe have been a Memorial Stadium. Well, it's a Wednesday night, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that, that 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 alone is makes it unique. I mean, you remember during the it was help me now nine eleven two thousand one Rice game Nebraska they on played a, a six o'clock game on a Thursday. Nebraska was ranked number one in the country on a Thursday. Now school was in session. It was. Right? I had class that day. Right, and it was that that created a unique situation. Parking players and, went to class that day. That you know that played in the game. Anyway, so the fact it's a Wednesday night and you're gonna have ninety one thousand people there. Incredible. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of unique. And the fact that that's before the concert artist has officially been announced. I yeah. mean, so like that's strictly for volleyball and a concert to be determined. Like it's not you can't even make the case like well they're there to see the concert and 
watch some volleyball along the side. That makes it even more impressive for, for what they're trying to accomplish for the sport of volleyball. And how much do they say again, Abby, what, what they're going to give each school like for financial, I mean, payouts. I think was I could 50, be wrong, but I thought it was 50,000. Yeah. That's what I thought too. But just what will the final number be that comes in the gate that Nebraska makes on this? Yeah. I don't know. Cause you know, you got to think for John cook, in Nebraska, their wheels are going to spin like, God, should we do this again? But I think they're going to also find out it's a lot of work. Um, sticking on that topic of stadium, a um, couple other interesting notes that Trev Albert shared. Um, you've got, well, first of all, Abby, there's going to be 400 more seats added to the Devaney Center. Mm. Um, and there's a massive waiting list for volleyball tickets. So you, you're going to get um, 400 more people season tickets, which you're over there every game. I mean, how, how needed are those seats right now? Yeah. I mean, everyone in town is clamoring to get tickets and you can't just casually come in and find a ticket anywhere. They don't even have them available on StubHub or Ticketmaster or anything show like that. Yeah, it's like, it's insane. And I'm also interested to see how they get 400 more seats That's what seats I was just going to ask you. Like, where are they going to put 400 new seats? It's packed. <laughs> <laughs> are those upper benches? Remember the old upper bench seating in the Devaney, like the nosebleeds, you'd almost call them. Or do they use those now? Yeah, I, I think so. They use... All Every the seat bench. that they can get, and they have a bunch of standing room up top too. That's always full. We, my dad, we bought like a four pack or three pack when I was a kid, and it, like, oh, got this great deal. We got tickets to four games. They're all like upper bench yeah. seats. When I was a kid, like we saw <laughs> the Husker games. Yeah, yeah. the Ameri Oops. the old Emeritus Classic. Remember mm -hmm. that tournament they used to run? What years was this? In the nine mid nineties. Like Who's Ty the coach? Tyron, Danny Nee. Was it Danny? Tyron Lou and Mikey Moore? That team. Oh, there you go. Those are the days. My dad took our friend. We a bunch of my friends and I all went. And we, but we sat up in those old Devaney bench seats. Mm -hmm. well, that's fun. It. But all right, other uh, ticket notes. For speaking of 400, 400 East Balcony club seats remain in football for and football. That, that's for football, and there's more tickets that remain. But on the club level, that that's a significant number, guys, um, because I don't think you people quite grasp the amount of financial commitment you have to make to get club seating. You're talking minimum 1500 to maximum $2,500 per seat per year. So if you wanted to get a pair of club tickets, your donation would range from 3000 to 5000 plus the price of the ticket. You um, listened to Trev Albert's talk on the radio on Monday night. Did he sound concerned and did he, was he in salesman mode? I, they also rolled out these, these mini packages, mm -hmm. you know, and, Really? Where it's Louisiana Tech, Northern Illinois, and then a Big Ten game to be determined. And I, I just think they've got to figure out a way to get through this year. Because I, I do believe after this year, they're going to start the project of the stadium and and, and, okay. and fix things up. And and he talked about that on the show. They, they've got to get Memorial Stadium right for the next generation. Right now, sitting on a little 12-inch bench seat with a guy's knee up your back Hello. is not – Ideal with no chair back, especially when the team's not winning with bench seating spaces that were made for people in the 60s. You've got a south end zone <laughs> that offers no escalators <laughs> at all. I mean, it's stairs or ramps. I right. mean, just the no bathrooms, the logistics of the south stadium, you know, outdated. Yeah. It's third world in a lot of respects. Well, easy. <laughs> well I mean, there, there, there's no elevators, there, there's no there's no bathrooms, there's no concession stands. Mm -hmm. It's just bitch, and you have to. I mean, if you sit in row like 92, it's tough. You're I mean, right. No, and you I'm, compare that to their peer programs. I mean, like compare that to like Minnesota's right. stadium, which is significantly smaller, but how much more of an enjoyable fan experience is that? A much more. With the concourse space, with the seating. Like, think about Ireland. Yeah. yeah. Like, we sat up in like the top areas. And the, I mean, those were amazing seats. Mm -hmm. They were. I, yeah. No, I, my, my dad's 80. Two, 83 years old and it's hard for him to go to games i mean because oh, yeah. they you, you got to walk up those steps yeah. um like if you got to walk up if you're 83 years old and you got to walk up 40 steps that's that's going to wear you down one of those really hot games i mean yeah. and what are you going to do sit there for four hours yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have to go up those steps probably multiple times you need to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. and that's a hike in itself do you remember southern miss i think it was 2013 how hot that game was yeah, people were like getting carried out on stretchers it was a it was an like eleven a.m. I think it was an eleven a.m. game too. Might have been, maybe two thirty. It was brutal, and it, there was no wind, and it was like ninety five with just like humid. the on field temp was like hundred and oh, it was 20. brutal. Oh, I do remember that. It was an opener because yeah, I, and it was a tough game. 
they, it was. They, they had to catch it. I mean, didn't 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 Nebraska have to score late? I thought that was one they. I thought that's the game that Southern Miss gave up their game in New Orleans for to okay, play you Nebraska. Right. You could be right. 2013 Nebraska Southern, but because that that was going to be in New Orleans, mm -hmm. and then Southern <laughs> Nebraska won 56 to 13. Yeah. Oh, never mind. <laughs> no, I, I don't remember a that being off. a close game. They were not pressed. Was, God only knows what game I was thinking of. Um, but well, anyway, lost to Southern. Anyway, Miss. also Sean, the track, the track matter. Yeah, and and you know this is notable because look where the track program's at right now. They're the Big Ten champions on the men's, the men's side. side. The yeah. women's are third. They're bringing in an unbelievable recruiting class with some of these football guys. Jeremiah Charles and Jalen Lloyd are, you know, their PRs are both 50 foot and triple jump. And they've got several guys that have run on the 10 fours, 10 threes, 10 twos, and the 100 coming in. So there's going to be more interest in track at Nebraska, I think, in the coming years. And, uh, but they have not been approved to add the stadium seating. So right now you've got a track mm -hmm. with no grandstands. Right. Which means they can't host meets right now at Nebraska, which you know it's a little disappointing. I, I think, you know, like if, if you were a fan and you knew all these football guys were gonna run out there next spring or jump, you'd maybe go want to go watch. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I'd like to know the parameters, like how much money they need to make this right. And Trev did say he's like, We were given kind of a cheaper option, and we don't want to do that. We want to make this right. And I know initially when they laid out the plans, I mean, there was some fear in Omaha that this facility could make a run to host state track. Now, I don't know if that's the case, mm -hmm. um, but it was going to be a phenomenal track facility with grandstand seating and the ability to host some NCAA, maybe regionals in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. I think some costs changed. Construction, uh, yeah. Yeah, construction costs escalated. And so now we're that's where we're at. But it would be good for the community of Lincoln as well to have that kind of track here. Yeah, you know, be excellent. I mean, Lincoln High right now is like the only track stadium in town, and that's where LPS runs all their stuff out of. And you know, the old Ed Weir was pretty iconic the way that track was right next to the football stadium. It was mm -hmm. iconic. Um, and so it's gone, and, and it's it gone. Literary. I mean, it's where, <laughs> and speaking of gone, the, the football facility is there now, and, and that is going to be something to watch because I just get the sense this thing's going to go all the way down to the wire as far as getting that football team in there. For the start of fall camp that's the objective now trev has made it pretty clear it'll happen but i think mm -hmm. i think you're right i think it's gonna while. be tight i think it's gonna be tight it everything's not gonna be done for no. with that training facility but enough for the, the weight room the locker room enough for the football team to be in it for the football season and the coaching offices may not be in there yet that, now that's awkward mm -hmm. the that's coaching awkward. offices might be in the old setup now i said that's awkward that's my sense I, it would be i would think it would be awkward um, you'd want to be where your players are. I would think if you're a coach, I would be. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, it's a massive project, though. The go big project, and you know, with about. some of the supply chain issue. I mean, I, I just, I mean, just to get your hands on materials. I, I was talking to a guy like, you know, a few months ago, if you wanted to get a garage door, mm -hmm. it was a seven eight month wait to get a garage door sent to you. I mean, just my God. Now, now that's gone down to like three or four weeks, mm -hmm. but like that's where things were at when they were building this project. So I'm sure there's a lot of supplies that maybe got backed up that are have slowed down this <sighs> deal. But that will be something to watch. Like, what will that look like? And good thing Nebraska's on the road, by the way, for the first two weeks. Sean, that's a lot of raccoons getting in your garage. A lot of possum. <laughs> maybe a, even a coyote. If we have foxes in our neighborhood. <laughs> They're not possums. have chickens. Oh, I talked to an animal control guy who said foxes have overtaken Lincoln. I mean, that, that, that we've never seen as many foxes in Lincoln as we're seeing right now. And that's from animal control. That's not from simple. I was just driving down like by Costco in the middle of the street. There was a fox just, just trotting across the tearing, tearing apart a dead squirrel in the middle of the street. <laughs> wow, that's Sweet. dark. Um, <laughs> kids look away. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've had foxes in our backyard. We live right over by Costco. So well, we've lost cats to a mm -hmm. coyote. We lost chickens to a fox. There's a bobcat in our neighborhood. Um, there's a bobcat. There's a bobcat that's <laughs> caught on cam. Uh, one of my neighbors' camera catches it all the time coming over from Wyuka. God bless, oh. like the neighborhood Facebook page and just the people that like post that stuff. I mean, there's a, a lot of other entertaining. You don't posts. want a bobcat in your backyard, trust me. What would you do if you you were like confronted with a bobcat in your yard? Well, I don't know. Exactly. They're more they're more scared of you than you are of them, though. Ah, uh, Sean, I'd be careful with that mentality. Uh, I can see you fighting the bobcat. 
right, there you go. There's <laughs> our right. wildlife. On that note, <laughs> there's our wildlife. Sake. On that note, when we come back, we'll take your questions in the mailbag. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show. And we're back here on the Husker Online Show. Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washett, Abby Barmore now taking your questions in the mailbag as Abby is still with us here. Abby, where, where are you going to start us out with? All right, first one. Do you think that Daniel Kalen gets a bump up to a four star? during his senior year and could he go off during his final year of high school at Bellevue West? And he has a lot of, you know, highly ranked wide receivers. How can I help him? Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, he, he's right at the top of the three star and I know it, it's led to some debate. Like why are Husker fans acting like this is a big time addition? He's a three star quarterback. And I mean, he's like the highest ranked three. So he, so it's like amazing if he just slotted up like one or two more positions in the QB rankings, he would be a four star. So, um, I don't it's hard to say a lot of it will be yeah his season and 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 what he does and how it looks and um I don't know what other events he's going to take part in this summer if he's doing any seven on seven or places where he might be seen um but he's a quality quarterback he's you know one of the top you know there's sit what there's 65 70 power five schools now he's the 27th ranked quarterback in the country yeah and really doesn't matter I mean he's committed Nebraska got him and what he's rated when all said and done, like who cares at mm -hmm. this point? It's a good point, Rob. Just like right if you're trying point. to get offers, stars matter. Yeah. But if you've already found your school, like just do do your thing, Daniel. He, Don't worry. He about has it. a big season under his belt. You know, thirty-eight touchdowns, seven picks, three thousand six hundred eighty-nine yards. I mean, he did what he's done. What he's done now, could he improve on that? Yeah, but I'm with Rob. Does it? Does it? If if he gets a star or not, I don't. It doesn't change my perception. And the fact that what Sean said, like we we're talking about like semantics here, where like he's as close to being a four star as possible. So you're going to downgrade him because he's a three star. But if he was slotted two spots higher, he'd be a four star. Like, you know, what, yeah. what, what, are, what are we talking about? Right. Here? This is, I mean, real talk. Dan, Daniel Kalen knows the score here. He was a second choice. He was a second. Of course, he was a second choice. I mean, that it was the number one quarterback in the country that Nebraska had a chance to get. It's all this is good. All this is perfect for Daniel Kalen. And they knew the one big takeaway, Sean, getting away from the star talk is Bellevue West, Huffman, Kalen, they knew exactly where they stood because Rule told them right away. Michael Huffman went to rule in january and said okay how are you going to handle this kalen and rayola how are we going to do this rule said we have a, a guy we're we're trying to get okay and if that doesn't work you're we're going to you it didn't work with rayola they went right to daniel kalen stars i don't care okay it doesn't matter to me to give you a better taste of the numbers okay. the on three industry ranking which is all the rankings combined into one has him number 27 in the quarterbacks. The, okay. the four-star quarterbacks start at number 23. Okay. So he's there's quarterback. three quarterbacks ahead of him until you get to the four-star level. So he's right there. Yeah, and I get it. I know some people look at that. and say, Changes their life if they have a four-star. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to say – I'm not going to be disparaging. I mean, there's some prestige attached to being a four-star. I understand all that. But Rob's right. Once you got the, the player, what's it, it doesn't yeah, matter at that At that much. point, it's yeah. just – just a star. All right. All right. Next, I have a series of under over questions. So oh we'll boy. go one by one. Thomas Fedoni, do you think he'll have over 250 yards or under? I said over. I said over. Yeah. 250 seems light. I mean, yeah. He could have 100 in a game. Right. I mean, and that's, 250 struck me as light. Yeah. Light. I, that think, was, I mean, I thought 400 would be a better barometer to go with or four or five. I mean, but 250 seems like a likely number. Don't you think that he could be their go-to tight end? Yes. That's yeah. what I'm expecting. They want him to be their go-to tight end. Yeah. yeah. All right, next. Princewell, Uman Yellen, does he have over or under five sacks next season? That's a lot for a true freshman. I said under. Maybe not by much, but we're I'm agreeing just, I'm too much under. here. That's a lot. I, I feel like these numbers were too obvious. Like, I mean, like, they weren't uh, this is from the chat this week and, and they, they weren't like really that hard to say over on I mean, yeah i think we all there were numbers that we were all we disagreed on some i think the next two we might have some disagreements okay, okay. the next one anthony grant over under five touchdowns over see i said under really because Who's you gonna think they're gonna let, le lean on irvin i think they're gonna run the qb a lot in the red zone i think they're gonna give irvin the ball a lot in, okay. the, in the on the goal line 
I still believe that Anthony Grant. I think they're going to throw the ball on the goal line. I believe that Anthony Grant is their best running back until I'm proven otherwise. I, yeah. I mean, is there anybody on the roster you'd say he's looked better than Anthony Grant? In their best moments, no. 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 Ramir Johnson in his best moments, Gabe Urban, has, no, have not looked no. better. A.J. Allen, you could argue in his best moments, he's da- danced with Anthony yeah. Grant when he was here. Yeah. But different show, different coach, different offense. We'll see. All right, what do you got next? All right, our last one, Malcolm Hartzog. Three interceptions under over. That's said, a tough number. I said under. I'll just say under because three picks is a lot. It is. I took the easy way out and said push. You're three not- three sounds perfect. Now, he will be their quote-unquote number two corner, could, could be their number two corner, which means more volume of throws his way, which means more opportunities for picks. So, you and know what's interesting about Maybe that. teams are going to try to test him because he's a small corner out there. He, he uh, made teams pay for doing that last year. I wonder how long he will be their number two corner. I wonder if there's a point where you look at Hartzog and say, no, he's their best corner. And that's no – I mean, Newsom's a good player. Quentin Newsom, who's clearly their, – their, he's going to be a starter. But I don't think Hartzog's too far behind that. Define best, though. Oh, so remember, don't... like, Prince, no one would throw him the ball. And so, like, Dennard got all the stats. You know, because people were trying to, they had to throw to him. They right. weren't throwing to Prince. Right. And so I'm not saying Quentin Newsom's Prince, <laughs> Prince, uh, whatever his name is. I'm, I'm a Kamara. Kamara. Thank I'm you. Kamara. Uh, Kamara. But, but this is a guy that two coaching staffs now have said is an NFL corner. So Newsom. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What do you got next? All right. So single game tickets went on sale on Wednesday for Colorado. How many Husker fans do you think will be in Boulder at the game? That was quite the scene today. I don't know if you followed that, that no. the tickets went on sale today um, for to the public at 11 a.m. Central. And <laughs> for one, as you might expect, the Colorado ticket website was just flooded. And they were doing only online purchases. Like you wouldn't call, you couldn't do in-person purchase. And so there was like, people were waiting there for almost close to an hour, even to just get the chance to, to buy a ticket. And once they got there, like if you wanted two seats together, you're looking like 700 bucks a pop. So the Colorado ticket office is basically selling the tickets at a scalper's price. And there's a lot of people that were trying to buy tickets from a Nebraska billing address that were said they couldn't get the thing to go through. But people from out of state billing addresses had no problems whatsoever. Oh, boy. Oh Conspiracies boy. for days. Well, One third the stadium is a conservative insane. estimate for how many Nebraska fans. I think that's very I think 15,000 for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, because this is just the initial public sale, like the secondary market is like that's a whole nother wave of tickets that are going to be purchased, especially if they are denying Nebraska billing addresses from buying tickets. It will be. a. I mean, we say this all the time, but it's almost become a stock phrase. It's going to be a wild scene, even at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it was pretty wild the last time <laughs> it, was. it was. It was hot, too. Remember? Yeah, yeah. I do. I remember very vividly. Yeah, it was hot on the field. All right, we've okay. got time, Abby, for two more. Okay, how do you think that Husker baseball will do in the Big Ten tournament this week? Mm. Well, they're playing their first game as we're taping this show, so that, that kind of dictates a lot of things. I think they're going to win a couple, but they're not going to have enough to finish. Yeah, they're not built to lose this game and have to Come play, out of play their way on the, the back end pitching. of the tournament. Yeah, because they don't not have the pitching. pitching. They, they need to be front runners, yeah. basically, from start to finish. Stay on schedule. That being said, I... Not hold my breath on that. I just, there, there's just ahead. not a lot of buzz. I mean, with all this right now, I mean, I, I just think a lot of the fans, you know, when you lose to North Dakota State, South Dakota State, UNO, Creighton, you know, there's just not as much momentum with a fan base right now that would that wants to get behind this. But you you haven't given them a lot. There's been some moments this year, but there hasn't been that consistency that will fill that stadium necessarily unless they can win these first couple games. Well, I the mean, crowd today is pretty good. The, yeah. The other part of that is they're not, they're, they're out of NCA at large bid contention. When they went, when, when it became clear that they're not an NCA at large bid, they're out of that. Mm-hmm. That takes a lot of the wind out of the, out of the sales. If they were in contention for an NCA at large bid, we'd be following it very closely. They got to win it. They got to win the tournament. Now, if they get to the championship game, I bet the fan base does an about face almost like, oh, wait a second, they're in a championship game, 20,000 people in the stadium, right? Mm -hmm. Cheering for Nebraska to get to the NCAA tournament. Then it that's it could change really fast. The dynamic could be really interesting this weekend. If they get to the championship, 
the state will be watching, right? Yeah. They got to take care of today first. We'll see. <laughs> see <laughs> the right. shelf life of this conversation yeah. in a few hours. Final question, Abby. What chain restaurant that is not currently in Nebraska would you like to see at a location in Lincoln? Bob yeah. Evans. 100%. No, I'm a Portillo's guy. Myself. I'm sorry. Portillo's. Yeah, that was okay. A, that was a good. Thing. And they do have one in Iowa. There's like a cedar. Our, yeah. our friend Tom Caker of Hawkeye Report lives in um, what, what, Davenport, mm -hmm. right, right in the Quad Cities there. They have one there. So I would go for Portillo's hot Italian beef sandwich, Chicago dog. Okay. Bob Evans is just a very good breakfast type place. I went there at the, next to the Detroit Airport Marriott. You walked over there by yourself. I did. You were solo. Yeah. On a great, dingy day, you <laughs> made it over to Bob Evans. It was Evans. delicious. I'd never had Bob Evans. So, you back credit that. My pick, I remember answering this question. I went with Freebirds World Burrito. It's a, I guess you could call it Chipotle style. It was like the original Chipotle. Of place. Yeah. It's based in Texas. Like Austin, Austin, College Texas. Station, Austin. Yeah. That sounds great. It is Bob. phenomenal. I Sounds ate there great. like 20 Phenomenal. some years. I got introduced to that like 20 some years ago. I was in College Station, I believe, or Austin, and we had it there. And that, that, free birds. So good. Hmm. Bob, what about you, Abby? What do you think? Um, I got a couple. One is Dutch Bros. It's like a coffee chain. Hmm. Um, they have it in Colorado where my cousins live. It's so good. What's and so then, good about it? Their <laughs> coffee? <laughs> I don't know. It's good. <laughs> I'm a big coffee person. Okay. All right. Um, well, it's I way mean, better than Starbucks, but I think everything is. Well, um, hello. Also, well, there goes our sponsorship yeah, wow. deal. I've been working on all summer. <laughs> <laughs> I really like their Americana. I mean, actually, it's great. Um, also, Fuzzies. I would love to see another Fuzzies here. I know that okay. it went down during COVID, but I loved going there in college. Taco place? Yeah, mm -hmm, and they yeah. have really good margaritas. Well, that, well okay. Okay. Fuzzies tacos. We lost some good play, like Burger Fi. We lost during COVID, right across. That was a good little option down here. We lost Jimmy John's. I mean, what Jimmy John's doesn't make? We lost the one here in the Haymarket. No, no. We did. Place yeah. is cleared out. It was Bummer. a great option to have that just to walk over there and grab that in a, sure. when you were in a hurry. But give me my Portillos. Okay, Sean. Oh, walk in Walk Ons Bistro Sports Bar. That that's the one that we saw in in Purdue that Drew Brees owns. They're putting one of those in Gretna. Nice. Oh, they are. Nice. Yes. Okay. So that that would call, say the name of the operation. Walk-ons. Walk-ons. I mean, it's a Southern Louisiana, Texas-based upscale sports bar chain mm -hmm. that that serves, you know, like Buzzard Billy's type food, okay. Cajun food. So it's, it's a sports bistro spelled B I S T R E A U X. Okay. <laughs> The All right, way. let's give it that real Cajun flair. <laughs> on that note, we're going to close the show in our final segment. We're hit on a number of different topics. You're listening here to the Husker Online Show. And we're back here on the Husker Online Show. Final segment, Sean Callahan, Steve Sipple, Robin Washett, taking you home on Memorial Day weekend. Guys, you know what Memorial Day weekend also signifies? It's the start of college football preseason magazines. And maybe I'm the only nerd that gets excited about this still. But I, no, growing up, not. I used to get great pleasure like going to our local Hy-Vee or Walgreens or wherever and, and, and buying those college football magazines. And and Robin's been with me since 08, and I still do it. Mm -hmm. And I come in the it office. It has not slowed down whatsoever. I, I buy every one of them. The Lindy's, the Phil, the Phil Steele is always my favorite. but he, It's always the last one. It's the I last know, one. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember I was in Connecticut on my summer internship driving to like Rhode Island. For a, and I, I saw a Phil Steele magazine in like a gas station in Rhode Island. I was like, oh, God, I, I grabbed that sucker. I, I was so excited yeah. to see. No, I'm glad you're – hey, Sean, this is a good public service because a lot of people don't – they don't think of the Memorial Day weekend as as that being a piece of it. Athlon, Lindy's, and Phil Steele I appreciate are, it, Sean. are the three main ones, right? Yeah, I'll go – I. I mean, can I say I go to Barnes & Noble? That's where I go. I go to Barnes & Noble. Yeah, th th that's going to be your – most consistent place now. High V will sometimes slip. I was in High V this morning, and I purposely and? had a package that I could have mailed in our downstairs post office here. But I'm like, you know, I want to go into High V and just see if those magazines made the shelf. Didn't Nothing? make the shelf yet. Okay. No, I'm glad that's Sean. I appreciate this because that that's college football tradition. That's what that is. That's a beautiful part of it, actually. And that, 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 and really, how often do you sit down with a magazine anymore? Mm -hmm. Now, I still have last year's Lindy sitting on my kitchen table. 
I mean, I, I, I keep it like a bot like for our bot. purposes. Like right now, yeah. they're like invaluable they're just to, for one to learn about who Nebraska is going to play what the rest of the conference looks like to see a depth chart, uh, you know, and just the, the, they break down each position. So you have a pretty good frame of reference for what you're talking about all off season when you're previewing games in July. 100%. So, you know, like they're a, they're a real tool for what we do. Yeah. And now, now think about it though. Think about, this day and age we're in, how often rosters change. I mean, Nebraska just added a player. Mm -hmm. The the one the up to date information is really valuable. And I will say this: some magazines are better than others mm -hmm. at that. I'd say Lindy's is high end. Like I was. Well, amazed. Tom Deanhart does Lindy's, right? For yeah. the Big Ten. Yeah, mm -hmm. for the Big Ten, and it's a, it's pretty up to date. It's about as up to date as you could expect. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Sean, I'm glad you brought that up. That's the key, though. Like you got to have somebody like a Tom Deanhart doing these for like the certain conferences, like. Because I've seen – you can see some bad ones where, like, there's players on the depth chart that aren't even here anymore. One Pictures of guys that aren't even on the team. Right. <laughs> right. I, actually, last year – well, no, I'm glad you said that about Dean Hart. Lindy's is what I buy because of Dean Hart. Because I know Dean Hart's going to have good information. He calls us. Yeah. And he goes over things of the – like, he always asks me, what do you think of these? Like, the you know, like, he, he asks a lot of people for their feedback to make sure it's good. Mm -hmm. Remember curiously last year, and this is no, I'm not, this isn't a commentary on the player. It was just very interesting that Ramir Johnson was the cover boy for Nebraska's magazines last year. Yeah, not Casey Tom. I mean, I would have put Casey Thompson on the cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he, they, they probably didn't, I mean, they could have used a spring game photo of him, but that would have yeah. been the problem. But like, to me, you put like who's going to sell the most magazines on the cover. Yeah, yeah. was it? It was, I, or I, Garrett I, Nelson. Why wasn't Garrett right. Nelson on the cover? Right. He was the, he was definitely the face of the program from a, player standpoint and he, he embraced that i didn't think it was bad to have ramir on there i just thought it was curious it was mm -hmm. curious to me who are you gonna put on so if you're doing the cover okay now, who are you putting on hold on because like on. quentin newsome and guy does that sell like you put, i think you put jeff sims on there that's what i think he we know he's the starter i think it's jeff sims he's the yeah. most exciting player he's the starting quarterback of the new era or you just do matt rule no i yeah but if they don't put coaches on those covers yeah they often. don't I'd say Jeff Sims. Now, if you're, what about defense? If they want to put a defender, you put Newsom, like Quentin Newsom, well, Reimer, Ty Could Robinson. Reimer. Yeah, yeah. I'm put. You know what? I'm putting Jeff Sims, or I'm putting Anthony Grant. Anthony Grant. Yeah, I'm putting. I'm putting Jeff Sims. Okay. I remember we were with Ramir last summer, and, and he was almost like uncomfortable being on the cover he's like yeah you know yeah. like i mean he was like almost like i mean he probably surprised himself oh i remember distinctly when we were doing those interviews last last summer, summer. and he he threw out that well you know they're asking me to play some slot too and i was like oh god um <laughs> i did say it to him but i wanted to say uh, be careful with that the wide back yeah yeah the, but you know what they're doing it again they and maybe it'll work better this time you're listening here to the Husker Online Show as uh, we wrap it up here, guys. Um, also want to hit on uh, what? Matt Rule's comments in USA oh, yes. about what Nebraska wants to do uh, on offense. Well, he said, I mean, it was. I thought it was a really well-written column by Paul Meyerberg of USA Today. And I, he said a couple things that were fascinating. He said Rule told him we're going to practice long, we're going to practice long, and we're going to be physical. And he said, I know that's not in vogue right now, but that's what Nebraska fans want. They want us to be a physical football team. We're going to have long physical practices. So I think it's valuable. that There's a column. I think it's valuable. I think pieces like this, this sort of column, because we're still kind of getting to know Matt Rule and how he wants to go about this, right? So that was that was – that was uh, informative. And then he said later in the article that our strength is a running game. Our strength is a running game that we will we will use behind a big physical offensive line. Now think about that in the context of last year. Mm -hmm. Nebraska didn't – Nebraska's strength wasn't a running game behind a big physical offensive line, right? Now the offensive line configurations changed. Sean pointed out on, on my radio show this morning – nor Dean Newely wasn't available last year. Prohaska was hurt. Sean, who was the third? Who was the third guy? Ben oh, Scott. And, and yeah, Ben Scott. Three different guys on the line now. So rule, rule saying you can't publicly, call this line last year's line. No, not really. And 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 that that's you know if you have a negative half empty 
spin. Oh, it's the same guy. It's not the same guys. How about that, though? How about rules saying in USA Today, our strength is a running game behind a big physical offensive line? That catches my attention. And that the ability to run the football and get downhill is probably our greatest strength. Now, again, now and there's, there's something else that needs End to be quote. pointed out here. At Baylor, Temple, and Carolina, they didn't run the ball that well. Okay. His best team at Baylor, guys, was 61st nationally in rushing. Okay. His best team at Temple, I'm trying to get Sean's attention. He's watching TV. Um, <laughs> that's that, that, a three run jack. So okay. <laughs> his best, his best running team at Temple was 61st. Okay. I'm his best, his best running game at Baylor was 61st. At Carolina, they were 21st in the league his first year and 20th in the in the second year. Mm -hmm. It's not like his history is, oh, yeah, we pound. Has he had a guy like Jeff Sims, though, that can add to the running game? Because yeah. when you have a running quarterback, you don't have a lot of sacks either. Mm -hmm. That Yeah, my continue with that. I wonder how much of these comments that he's making are based on personnel to where, like, the whole narrative is what he's starting with at Nebraska is light years ahead of what he had starting at Temple and Could what be. he had starting at Baylor. They like, his run, they like their run. To where, guys. like, they are so much further along in the process from a personnel standpoint that you can make comments like that. Well, I always wanted to run the ball, but I never had the horses to do it. Now I've got a big offensive line and a stable of running backs. Now we're going to change this identity from what I had done in previous. Well, days. it's not only that it's that it could be that, but it's also a couple things. He's in a conference now where it's not now. Listen, I, I, I gotta be careful here. It's not really the, power-based run game conference it used to be. So Nebraska could be kind of unique. And what else, what else could be a factor here? His boss. His boss wants a certain kind of football. I don't mm -hmm. think Trev wants air raid at Nebraska. I don't, I don't think he wanted a Mike Riley offense here. Not well, Mike Riley. Like, Mike Riley. He I mean, ran he, it a little bit. The, the UCLA bowl game. Well, that was an that was kind of an anomaly. <laughs> that was a bit of an aberration. Want the frost yeah. offense. Hey, trust me when I say that's an aberration because I thought, okay, that night, okay, Riley gets it. This is what it's going to look like. It didn't look like that. Yeah, Langsdorf didn't want to run it either very much. Not really. But he would argue back, yeah, we want to run it, but not when you get one yard on first down. Right. But anyway, yeah, those comments in the USA Today article, and that USA Today article in general was very revealing. All right, big weekend. Uh, as, as we talk about Big Ten baseball coverage on Husker Line, Grant Hansen will be out on site uh, covering the action for us. So make sure you check that out on our site. Um, lots going on. Summer football camp still won't start until the first weekend of June. So a little bit of a calm before the storm. Uh, we've got a great deal at Husker Online right now. Six months for $29.99. Get you access. If you're not a member, check that out. Also like and follow us here both on YouTube and subscribe to our podcast anywhere you can find podcasts. Thanks for joining us here this week on Husker Online.